In this video, I will discuss the new enhancements included in the new SAP 2000 version 25.00. Here are the new items that have been included. For data files, a new high strength material has been added to the Chinese material library, show you where that's located. New frame hinge assignments, presets, including distributed plasticity, have been updated. New loading options available to the user, including auto seismic and wind loading, as well as response spectrum for ASCE 722, NBCC 2020, as well as NBCC 2015 auto wind loading. As for design, new steel frame design codes have been updated, AS4100-2020. Lastly, a model explorer has been added for faster navigation around the model, and we'll show you how to use that. So let's get started. Okay, let me show you where the new high strength steel material has been added to the Chinese material library. If we click on define materials, add new material, the user has the ability to pick different material properties from different regions. So you can see all the options available to the user here. If we select China, steel, you'll notice that the JGJ-T483-2020 material has now been included. We click OK and see that it's populated in the materials. If I click on Modify Show, you can update the material property data, including weight and mass, isotropic property data, as well as other properties for steel materials. Now that this material has been defined, you could use this to assign it to different frame elements. Next, let's take a look at the frange hinge assignment presets. This can be found underneath the assign frame hinges menu. So under assign frame hinges, you can see the frame hinge distribution type. There are a few options available to the user. For nonlinear beam column, this option is intended to be used for the most typical beam and column members, which are governed by flexural behavior and expected to yield at one or both ends of the member while maintaining elasticity or nearly elastic behavior at the mid span. So for expected hinge length, you can specify the expected hinge length, which is typically on the order of the depth of the frame section itself. You have the ability to select hinges. These are the available hinges that you have predefined prior to coming into this menu. Distributed plasticity, this is the new one that has been updated here in SAP 2000 version 25. This option is intended to be used for frame objects that are expected to have more complex yielding behavior over the entire length. For example, nonlinear buckling. Several integration types based on common quadrature rules are available, which determine the integration points and weights used for nonlinear hinges along the length of the frame type. So under frame hinge assignment data, these are the different integration types. The hinge location and length based on the integration points and weights for the associated quadrature rules. For example, five point Gauss Lobato. Because this integration type places hinges at the two ends of the frame objects, it's most suitable for beam and column members in buildings where yielding starts at the ends. And you can see there are a few different options available to the user. Next, for equal spacing, this is similar to the distributed plasticity option. This can be used for frame objects that are expected to have complex yielding behavior over the entire length as well. But this option adds evenly spaced hinges along the length of the frame object can be used for all hinge types. When used with a fiber hinge property, both elastic and nonlinear behavior of the frame and the hinge degrees of freedom is entirely governed by the hinges. So when using equal spacing, you have two options for spacing type. Max spacing to specify the maximum spacing between the hinge placed on the frame. You can use the number of hinges option to specify number of hinges to be distributed along the length of the frame. And you have the option to place hinges on both ends. And again, you can select the predefined hinge type as well. Lastly, the continuous spring support. This option is intended to be used for piles and grade beams, which are supported by springs at specified intervals and are meshed at the intersection with these supports. To facilitate the placement of these hinges between each support, this option adds one hinge at the center of every frame element associated with the selected frame object. So those are the differences between all the different frame hinge distribution types. 
Okay, let's take a look at loading. I'll show you where the new auto seismic and wind loads codes have been included. If I go under define, load patterns, let's define a seismic and wind load pattern. So we'll click, let's type wind. We need to make sure we select wind type. And under auto lateral load pattern, these are all the codes that have been included in the program. As you notice here, ASCE 722 has now been included as well. And if we take a look at modify lateral load pattern, these are all the options available to the user. You can update wind exposure parameters as well as wind coefficients. Now let's add a seismic load pattern. If we select quake type, and under this pull down menu, you can see ASCE 722 has been included in here as well. Other new codes that have been updated include NBCC 2020, which is right here. If we click add new pattern, modify lateral load pattern, the user has the ability to update all of these variables as well, including time period, lateral load elevation reins, and other factors and modifiers. And if we update the wind load, let's take a look at NBCC 2015. We can update the code here, modify load pattern, modify lateral load, and you'll notice for this specific code, NBCC 2015, now handles the dynamic procedure for open and rough terrain. There are some new design codes that have been embedded in the program as well. If we take a look at design, steel frame design, view revised preferences, these are all the design codes available to the user in SAP 2000 version 25. You'll see uh, AS4100 2020 is now included. And of course the user has the ability to update design preferences in this menu. Lastly, a new item has been included in SAP 2000 version 25 and that's the Model Explorer window located here on the left side of the screen. The Model Explorer window provides quick access to many forms used to define and assign properties or review model geometry, among other tasks. You can take a look at the Model tab, which updates all of these options. Display modal analysis input and output using the Display tab after you run the analysis can be done as well. So what you can do is expand a node on one level and right-click on a secondary node. For example, say I wanted to select some area objects. You can simply expand the areas, and if I click on any of these area values, you can see that the highlighted associated area element is being shown on the screen. I can make updates to assignments, add loads if need be, by simply double-clicking on the element itself and adding loads that are underneath this assign load menu. So perhaps I wanted to add a material property. So if I go to Properties, Materials, I can right click, Add New Material Property, and it takes me directly to that form we discussed in the beginning of the video. And you can make updates or add materials directly in this fashion. If I click on a frame element, you can see the highlighted frame is being shown here on the screen. I can right click, delete, or of course make modifications to the frame element as well, just as I did for the area object before. So this is a very useful tool that gives the user kind of a shortcut to access those types of menus, which also can be found at the top of the screen here as well. After running the analysis, we can take a look at plots and tables very quickly with the use of the new Model Explorer. Once the analysis has been run, if I click on the Display tab, click on Model Windows 3D Views, I have the ability to take a look at some different displays, including Deform Shape, where I can make modifications to the parameters of the Deform Shape view. I could also take a look at Forces and Stresses, so if in this case, perhaps I'm interested in Shell Forces. As well as perhaps Joint reactions. So the Model Explorer is a very useful tool that helps the user access different portions of the model very quickly.